Grace to you and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. And as I said at the beginning of this worship service and the announcements at the beginning, the welcome, this is a sermon series based on Connected to Christ, Overcoming Isolation Through Community, a booklet that was uh, written by Pastor Brian Davies, who's pastor at Lord of Glory, our sister congregation up in Grays Lake, Illinois. And I'm thankful that he wrote this story, uh, this book, and gave us this sermon series. In the book, he tells the story, it's many stories, but he tells one of the stories of uh, being a chaplain for the Grace Lake Fire Department. And he was called out one night for a fire. There was a fire in a home of Becca and Jay, and they lost everything. And Pastor Davies sat with them in the car as they watched their house burn down. Now, Jay was not a churchgoer, and neither one of these were members of his church. But in the following weeks as they were putting their life back together, the church as well as Pastor Davies reached out to this couple. And even the staff got together and had a simple little pizza dinner for them at the church. And that was the first time Jay had ever come to church there. And now they know of a community that they have. Even if it's a, started because of a tragedy, they now have a community that cares about them and they are connected to. Pastor Davies also tells a story about Pete. Pete was a lifelong member of the church, is a lifelong member of the church, and had been married for over 50 years when his wife had passed away. And the first Sunday back after the funeral, there's Pete sitting in his pew by himself for the first time in over 50 years. And as Pastor Davies got up to preach, the music director of the church, because he didn't have any other things to do during the sermon itself, went out and sat next to Pete in the pew. And so he wasn't alone. After the sermon was over, of course, the music director has to come back and lead the music part of the service. And so Marcus filled his spot, a young man in the congregation, to sit with Pete. Pete and Michael and Marcus were also connected because of that community that they call the church. Now, I don't have to tell you that we feel very disconnected in this world today. There are a lot of ways, reasons that we are disconnected today. One of them, of course, is Satan using the world. As Jesus calls him the prince of this world, he uses the world against us, and he tries to disconnect people, not only from each other, but also from God. But there's also another reason that we are all disconnected and feeling disconnected, and that's our own choices. We make choices every day, and some of those choices disconnect us from God. We typically call those choices sin. And God gives us the ability to make a choice because love requires a choice, but many times we choose to reject God now, the result of our disconnectedness is that there is no social gathering or social community anymore. Think about the way things used to be. Main Street or just walking down the street and you could sit on your porch and you could talk to people walking back and forth on the sidewalk. That doesn't happen too much anymore. We come home, the garage door goes up, we pull into the garage, the garage door goes down and we hide in our homes. We're disconnected even from our own neighbors. We don't spend time for the most part at the Legion Hall or at the bowling alley anymore. There is no social community anymore in our country. And then there's also the political divide. <laughs> you know, in 1960, they took a poll and 5% of parents had a problem if their child started a relationship with another person who was of a different political party. 5% in 1960. By 2010, that number rose to 40% of parents had a problem if their child started a relationship with someone of a different political party. Today, it's all out war. It's so much hatred and violence and vitriol uh, between the two or whatever political parties there are. And that's the result of being disconnected in this world. 
Now, this is all contrary to God's plan, which is why we hear the reading from Genesis. When God created us, he created us to be in community. In fact, the first thing that's said that is not good in the creation is that Adam doesn't have someone. He's alone. Every other animal and every other organism has its mate except for Adam. And so God creates Eve and creates family and creates marriage. And the three of them, God and Adam and Eve, are in community together. And that's the way God created us to be. That's why we long to be connected when we are not connected and why we have so many problems in this world being disconnected because the first and the second sin disconnected all of us. That first sin disconnected not only Adam from Eve, but Adam and Eve from God. The second sin disconnected Cain from his brother Abel by death. And we have been disconnected ever since. Until today, which when you see today, all the disconnectedness in this world. And yet, and yet God is calling us back to community. He is calling us to be together again because that's what he wants from, for us and from us. He wants us to be together. God is calling, but we resist. We resist his call to us. And so God sent his son. Jesus comes and removes the resist. He removes that which makes us resist God, our sinful human nature, our sins. He forgives our sins, what isolates us from each other and from God. He removes all of that. Through his death and his resurrection, our sins are forgiven, and what isolated us has now been removed. But this isn't going to be easy. This is the hard part now. Even though Jesus came and did everything that was necessary to forgive our sins and to remove that which disconnects us, it's not going to be easy. If you look in the Gospel of John in chapter 6, it's a very long chapter. In that chapter is one of the most famous stories of the New Testament, the feeding of the 5,000. And then Jesus starts to teach. And what he teaches the people after feeding the over 5,000 men alone, it's upwards of 10 to 12,000 people, he is teaching them, this is how I'm going to bring you back. This is how I'm going to bring you back into community by giving you my body and giving you my blood. It's a foreshadowing of the Lord's Supper. And by the time Jesus is done, he has failed with some of them. Now, I wrote that in my notes. Jesus failed with some, and I had a hard time writing those words. It's hard to re realize, it's hard to comprehend that Jesus failed, but remember what I said, that love requires a choice. And some of them chose to reject Jesus' teaching. In fact, so many rejected Jesus that day that he turns to his disciples and says, do you want to leave too? And that's where Peter says those famous words that we sing every third Sunday of the month. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Jesus is always ready to receive us because that's what he does. He takes our sins away as he dies on the cross and his resurrection from the dead removes that which isolates us, our death. And wants to bring us back into community. Now, Jesus ascended into heaven, that's true. But Jesus then created the church so that we could have a community to be connected to. Jesus, before he left, prayed for us, as I said in the children's message, part of the prayer of the gospel reading for today. Jesus prays, I do not ask for these only, but also for those who would believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. He creates the church and wants us to be one in community. 
so that others may know the joy and the peace that Jesus came to bring us. So he prays for us, sends into heaven, and then the church goes out and starts making disciples, making those communities wherever the gospel is preached and the sacrament is celebrated. But Satan tries to destroy this community. And he did a real number on us in the last year. Satan tried to get us as a church community to stop gathering together. And he was successful with some churches. For whatever reason, he was able to keep the churches separated from themselves, the, the community of churches. And even today, as pandemic is starting to be lifted here in the United States, there are still Christians and there are still pastors being arrested for gathering together in England and in Canada and in other places around the world. Satan is trying to destroy us, but please know that God cannot be defeated. God will win this battle because he has won the war through his death, through the death of Jesus on the cross. And so Jesus is still ready to call us back and still ready to receive us as he calls us back into community. And so we should also, there are many people here who are still, for whatever reason, not gathering together again in community that we call the church. Let us be ready to receive them back, to always open that invitation to them, not to judge them, and not to criticize them for staying away, but always just to call them back in love that they have a place here. Because now is the time to be connected to Christ. As more and more this world disconnects and tries to disconnect Christians from God, we need to be connected to Christ. We need to bring ourselves that peace that can only come from Christ himself that he gives to us in the word and in the sacraments. And that community that we call a church is now the connection not only to Christ, but to each other. And it's important that we be connected to each other because Satan isn't going to stop. He is defeated, but he's still not going to stop. He is going to try to disconnect all of us. He is not giving up. And so we can't give up. We must continue to draw ourselves, the, the members, the brothers and sisters back, and also to go out and tell other people the good news about Jesus so that we can be connected to Christ again. Now next week, we're going to show that Jesus invites us to find community in himself. And we're going to look at several different Bible passages that will help us realize that and that truth of that, even though they're 2,000 years old, those, those verses that they're still as relevant and still as important today. In Jesus' name.